flags flew at half-mast today at East End Park. As soon as news spread of Norrie McCarthy's death, tributes began to arrive at the ground. The longest-serving player on Dunfermline's books, McCarthy, was a well-known local figure, almost as popular off the park as he was on it. He joined Dunfermline from Cowden Beath a decade and a half ago at the age of 19. He stayed there ever since, captaining the club to the Skull Cup final in 1991. Players arrived for training today, but were sent home almost immediately. Uh, smashing day. Devastated. As the day went on, more fans arrived to pay their respects. Just, he was always captain courageous, wasn't he? I mean, he was always there for the club. Uh, everything he done was for Dunfermline. McCarthy's body was found last night alongside that of 26-year-old hairdresser Mandy Burns at his cottage near Dunfermline. The player had been missing since Sunday. His business partner and a pregnant ex-girlfriend made the discovery. The owners of the farm next door were the next on the scene. I went round to, to see if I could help. And I brought Julian to keep her away from what was going on because she was so, so distressed. But um, John Watson came out and said that Nora McCarthy was dead. A post-mortem was carried out on the bodies this morning. The cause of death confirmed as carbon monoxide poisoning. It's thought maintenance work had been carried out at the cottage recently. The gas central heating system may have been changed as part of those repairs. Well, I would imagine that that will come to the fore when these investigations by the gas authorities have been carried out. But uh, every, every line will be looked at. Today at the family home, relatives of the dead girl were too distressed to talk, as were her colleagues at the beauty salon where she worked. This evening, the front of East End Park has been turned into a shrine for Norrie McCarthy. Tonight's game with Dumbarton has been cancelled as a mark of respect. It's still undecided whether Saturday's match with Clyde Bank will go ahead. Well, you join me now live in the boardroom of East End Park. Everybody here obviously devastated today after the death of a man who's been an integral part of Dunfermline Athletic for a decade and a half. We've already seen a shrine that's developed outside the grounds. What's important to remember about the shrine out there, or important to notice, is the fact that it's not just the black and white of Dunfermline Athletic that's out there. It's scarves from Rangers supporters, from Hearts supporters, from Wraith Rovers fans, from Cowden Beast fans, from fans of clubs across the country. Perhaps uh, an indication of just how well respected Norrie McCarthy was in the footballing fraternity. I'm joined now by Dunfermline's manager, Bert Payton. Bert, he was your captain, he was your friend. What was so special about Norrie McCarthy? Uh, no, he was just a, a real nice guy, you know, he was the same for everybody, whether you're a supporter or you're a player of the opposition, he, he treated everybody the same, and from the YTS to senior pros, they all loved him, you know, and even in the community, I mean, he's Mr. Dunferman, basically, that's why. What special memories will you keep of Nori? Uh, my recent memory that sticks in my mind is uh, when we went up to play Dundee recently, and we went 2 nothing down in 10 minutes, and we were wondering what we were going to do and the man that led the fight back that day was Norrie McCarthy because he scored the goal a minute after their second one and, and that's where he always was in the heat of the battle, always leading from the front. I'm joined also by Paul DeMello, club secretary at Dunfermline. Paul, any plans yet for a tribute from the club? No specific plans at the moment. We'll develop over the next day or two. Uh, the biggest tribute I suppose that his fellow professionals and players at this club could do is to win the league for him. 